you are listening to another episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast series, brought to you by our goal sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing. We also want to thank our silver sponsors, Eilis Works and Pronox. If you would like to network and share your experience with our podcast guests and other aesthetic industry professionals, join our Facebook or LinkedIn communities by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Today, we're going to be speaking with one of the finest experts in aesthetics. Naren Arul Raja and Jeffrey Richmond founded the Business of Aesthetics community in 2019 to help practice owners find fulfillment and success. Jeff and Naren have worked together for 12 years helping practices grow. Over to you. Hello everyone. Welcome back to an amazing episode of the Business of Aesthetics podcast show. This is Naren, your co-founder and co-host of the podcast. Today we have an amazing topic. It's titled Marketing Lessons from the Trenches. Jeff Richmond shares his 15 years of experience with aesthetics marketing. Jeff, this is going to be a fun topic. Yeah, thanks, Naren. I love chatting with you about marketing. It seems like we've been doing this for 15 years. Yeah, I think it's probably more than that, but definitely 15 years for sure. Um, anyways, time flies. So the three things we're going to go through today, are I'm going to just list them first, and then we're going to go through them one by one. The first thing we're going to go through is what is possible with Google organic marketing. Uh, we'll share the key things you need to pay attention to. We'll share stats. Second thing we're going to go through is how to leverage your existing patients. Last but not least, we're going to talk about MVP events, MVP events. So let's jump in, Jeff. Um, yeah, Google marketing. Let's let's first uh, talk about maybe some of the mistakes that I made, or I don't even know if they're mistakes, but on the road to think, you know, one of the things that I wish when I talk to young people and the question comes up, what would you have done earlier in your business if you thought about it? Always SEO comes to mind because in the beginning I really didn't budget for it. I didn't think about it that much and. I really wanted immediate return on any dollar that was going in. So not knowing about um, using Google and Google wasn't the monster that it is now. It's, it was still monstrous, but it's, it wasn't the gigantic monster that it is now. Um, I used Google AdWords and spent a lot of money using Google AdWords. Absolutely. Uh, I remember you were spending thousands and thousands of dollars on AdWords and then you started doing organic and you were able to save money, but at the same time grow your business. Of course, it's overnight success, years in the making. Uh, I think we started working together in 2008. And um, back then, Google, like you said, is uh, one-tenth the size or less than one-tenth the size it is today in terms of how much money it made. I mean, their market cap, I think, was less than one tenth. Today, it's you know worth, I think, a trillion and a half. Uh, so Google has come a long way. It already it was a huge company, but now it's 10 times bigger. Um, and I think the game they played really well is uh, they made sure that 90% of the web pages on the internet get zero free traffic, free organic traffic, and that less than 5% of the web pages get 95% of the traffic. That's an awesome game, right? Because if... 90% of the people get no traffic, they all have to spend a lot of money with Google Ads. And that's how Google became 10 times you know, more valuable or 10 times more expensive with Google stock uh, over the last you know, 10 plus years. So it's a, it's a brilliant game they played. And, and it's interesting too, because it, it fooled us into thinking we need these large, robust websites to and you know and that every and we need pages for every single thing when in fact these if you have a page for something that's never being seen you really don't need the page it's uh it really comes down to exposure not so much the website but in the beginning again i was so focused on the website and the look of the website i really wasn't focused on the fact that nobody would ever see the website <laughs> 
You are hundred percent right. I mean, we we hired uh, expensive designers and built this wonderful website, but Google rearranged the world. Like people that don't know your website, so they have to go to Google to start looking for what they need. And like you said, Jeff, if they don't find you, uh, whether it's through an ad or whether it's organically, it doesn't matter that you spend twenty thousand or thirty thousand on your website with all those beautiful pages. No, it's it's a waste because nobody's going to those pages. And, so, and uh, even they're in, if they do, if they know where they're going, even if they go directly and they go to thriveportland.com and pull it up because we've given them the website and they're just looking for new information. If they happen to go to Google and type in the website and then everyone else's information comes up except for ours, it undermines our own credibility as well, because now we're not, it's like we're, we're getting um, damaged by not, not being seen. You know, it's like the double negative as well. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so I mean, we mentioned at the beginning of this conversation that 90% of the web pages get no traffic and 5% get 95% of the Google free traffic. You are a classic example of that. You are ranking for like 700 keywords the last time I checked on the first page of Google, meaning 700 different phrases people are typing in. You are showing up either number one, number two, number three, but definitely within the top 10 results. Uh, and you're doing it without having to pay ad money. So like you said, the credibility is huge because when you show up organically without an ad, people trust you. We all know anyone can buy an ad. So just by being associated with an ad, you lose that trust, which might explain why the average person coming to a web page through ads is only spending around 15 seconds versus the average person coming through organic, meaning without clicking on an ad, but by clicking on an organic result is spending one minute and 30 seconds. So it's like um, six times more time they spend, which shows they trust it. So they trust the trust how they get there. So it's almost like if you go to a party because somebody paid you to go to that party, you won't have a high opinion. But if you go to that party because you wanted to go to that party, you, you tend to want enjoy that party more. So it's, it's kind of the same thing, I guess. Yeah, yeah let, let's, let's focus on that 700 keywords that, you know, and Thrive in the most cases in the first, second or third position. I, uh, and in most cases we're in the first position, but if you're in the fourth or fifth position, you, you may as well be in no position. Uh, it's still good to be on the first page. Exactly. But, um, those first three matter. But I really want to talk about the snowball kind of effect of this, because in the beginning, again, we rank for no keywords. So then we pick the top, let's say, 15, 10, 15, 20 keywords that we're really going to focus on. And it takes that almost a year to really start showing for those keywords. Then all of a sudden we're starting to find traffic. Now we feel better about it. You're maintaining those 20 and then you know, the next month you add a couple more and the next month you add a few more. And now 15 years later, we rank for 700 keywords all over the internet with blog with, and, and I know you can focus on some of the, the specifics as to why Google is finding our pages, but that's the piece that I want people to understand is the, where the snowball effect is. You, you, you can't go rank for a hundred words overnight. And if you do, and your internet provider somehow uh, or, or digital marketing company promises you that they're doing it in a way that Google's probably going to blackball them um, if it's not in getting it done in the right way, because they're in there's Google has like crazy amount of algorithms and a crazy amount of rules, but they give you the playbook. You are hundred percent right, Jeff. Um, if you do things uh, in a way you 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 try to cheat, if I could use that phrase, cheat, meaning you try to find a shortcut that's not approved by Google, you're going to get blacklisted. And once you get blacklisted, the pain you're going to suffer is so much more than any benefit you may have experienced for a week or two or a month. So you'd never want to do that. I mean, there's a reason why Google dominates search. Ninety-two percent of Americans use Google versus other search engines because it's it's so so much better than everything else. You touched on this uh, in your comments, uh, you know, how do you show up on 
you know, near the top of Google for hundreds of keywords, but like you said, over time, not right away. Um, there are a few things that are really important, maybe around seven areas, but I'm gonna highlight the top five. Uh, and maybe we can have a quick chat about each one so at least people know what it is. One is NAP, which stands for Name, Address, Phone Number, Consistency. Second one is Google Lighthouse Score. Google gives a score for every single page, zero to 100 in four categories. If you get anything more than 90 in all four categories, Google likes that page. Google will rank that page. So you want to get a Google high Google Lighthouse score for every single page you want to rank. Third one is um, Google Eat. This doesn't affect every type of practice or business out there, but it affects certain industries. Healthcare is one of them. Eat stands for expertise, authority, and trust. So you want to tell Google that you are an expert, meaning you have an MD, you have the affiliation with the relevant associations. A stands for authority. Google appreciates people who are considered to be authority figures in the industry. So if you have videos where you talk about topics, being able to you know, embed that video on the relevant page correctly, the way Google tells you to, will help Google see you as an authority. Last but not least, trust. Trust is really important because Google wants to make sure that the people that, that they are referring to are trusted by people in the world or people in your community. So when you have a review, let's say about Botox, linking that review or embedding that review on the page that talks about Botox, again, doing it the way Google tells you to, will help Google see you as trustworthy. So we talked about NAP, Lighthouse Co, and Google Eat. Um, let me rattle off a couple of other things that Google looks at. Um, the other one that Google looks at is um, original content. Google is very, very big on this. So if you have even 5% of the text on a page that is similar, meaning this exact sentence or exact phrase, Google, you, you start exceeding Google's threshold and you won't rank. So the more original content you have, at least 95% or more, and the more words you have, minimum 400 plus words, the higher the chance of you ranking. Google loves text. That's how it figures out what's on every page and what people might be interested in. The fifth thing I would like to highlight is um, quality backlinks. So how many web pages are linking to you? And if those web pages are relevant, secure, and considered high quality, according to Google. There are lots of other factors like Google reviews, many, many, many other factors, but these are like the top five, Jeff. Um, uh, on the backlink side of things, what does that, what does that mean? What, what, can you give some examples of, is that me showing that I'm a part of an association or what, yes. what does that mean? Yeah, let me answer that. So this whole Google started out as um, a project. So there were two guys who were studying uh, computer science, PhD at Stanford, and they had to read a lot of papers for their research work. One guy's name was Larry Page, the other guy's name was Sergey Brin. And they being lazy guys, they said, okay, can we, instead of reading 300 papers, can we just read the top five? So they said, okay, how do we figure out which are the top five papers to read? So they looked at all the, all the other papers referencing a particular paper. So for example, if a paper is referenced by 10 other papers, and those papers are all written by pretty famous people, this, this must be a good paper. So they wrote a program that counted who's pointing to a paper and how good they are. So that was the basis of Google. Then said, okay, why can't we apply the same technique? Because the problem that existed when Google was founded was um, you could stuff a keyword 25 times and you would show up more. Like if you put the same Botox 25 times and somebody else only puts it 19 times, those search engines in those days would rank you higher. So, so they said, okay, the same algorithm or same technique can be applied, not just to help me figure out which papers to read, but to figure out which web pages to look at. That's the genesis of Google and they named it PageRank, which is named after the founder, uh, Larry Page. And that's how they started Google. So even today, those backlinks, studying who's linking to you, is it a good quality web page that's linking to you? Is that, again, how does Google define good quality? It has to be relevant. Meaning, 
if you are in healthcare, if that link is coming from a healthcare website, that's considered you know, relevant. Or if you are in a certain city or state, it's coming from a website talking about that city or state, that's considered relevant. They care about security. Today we get hacked by all kinds of people all over the world. So if, you're, if the website that's linking to us is hackable, meaning it's not safe, it's, it's not secure, then getting a link from such a website, Google thinks of it as a bad signal. So you don't want an unsecure website linking to you. The next thing Google looks at is, um, is that website a website that we like? If a website is liked by Google, at least 100 page will be on their index. So we look for that threshold also. At least 100 pages of that website we're getting a link from, is it indexed by Google? And uh, last but not least, the Lighthouse score of that page. If that page doesn't do all the things Google is telling us, the page we're getting a link from, then getting a link from them is useless. So we literally go through you know, page by page that meets all these criteria and then we get a link from such pages. And in the old days, we could get a link just to the main website homepage, but now we need to get links for every page we want to rank for. And it's also, it's never done, meaning a page that was considered a good page to get a link from three months ago may not be today because maybe that web page is no longer secure or website is no longer secure or they are not compliant with those four rules. So you always have to keep looking at the links you currently have as well to tell Google, ignore that link because we don't like that link anymore because you don't like that link, Mr. Google. So it's, it's a fascinating field. We have an entire team. Everything I just talked about, we have dedicated teams. There's an app team, that's all they work on. We work on finding all the discrepancies in the way your name, address, and phone number is written. Your name meaning your practice name. And then fixing it one by one. Same thing with backlinks, same thing with original content. You have more than 100 pages because there are so many different types of services you provide, meaning uh, Thrive Portland. So we wanna have relevant pages talking about those things. You know, so the it, original content is a interesting subject as well because Thrive, like every other physician office or provider in aesthetic medicine, when they buy a new machine gets a, well, nowadays we get a thumb drive and that thumb drive has before and after pictures and it's got content of what to say about the laser and before and after or, or uh, frequently asked questions. And we all rush to give that digital content to our digital media companies and then those digital media companies that are lazy that just directly paste that stuff up are really hurting us and we we don't realize because we're but i see it now over and over um, not only the same pictures but a lot of times the same words absolutely 80 percent of the web pages uh, websites we look at have duplicate content issues so it doesn't matter if they get an A in everything else like NAP and Lighthouse Go and stuff, but if they don't get an A in original content, they are not in the top 5%. They're not getting traffic from Google. So you have to get an A in every one of these things I talked about. And you and you guys go, you being Equa goes to make sure that, that uh, those pages don't have duplicate content. And, what, and as you start ranking more and more, now other people want to copycat your site. So they end up, copying some of your words, but now you do have duplicate content, even though you were the original content. Exactly, it happens a lot, Jeff, even with Thrive Portland. So every month or so we end up rewriting some pages for you guys, because some other practice goes ahead and copies that content because they see that Thrive is ranking so well, they're like, oh, let me just copy the information because that way I will also rank. But what happens is Google penalizes both parties, the party who's the, guilty party and the party who was the you know innocent party so instead of you know calling a lawyer and having them send a letter and wait for all of that to get sorted we just rewrite it no point just you know doing all that so that's part of the game rewriting your pages because somebody else will copy you of course they won't copy 100 pages at once they might copy one one practice will copy two pages and so forth so you just have to keep at it keep looking for, and there are tools that will tell you when somebody copies your information and they will send us an alert and then we go ahead and use that. Well, tool. and there's tools, you've mentioned them before to go see if your web pages, and that's what you have teams of people doing is, so you have one team that's just looking at the original content on each page and then they're using, maybe you can mention one of them, they're in a- Yes, the tool that we love is called Copyscape. 
and they have a free version. So if you want to see if any of your pages are copied, just type your URL for that page into www.copyscape.com and it will literally show you this same paragraph is in these seven other web pages or two other web pages. And most you see that? That's, that's a black, black mark. Most practices, you know, go do it. Do it for a page or two. But what these large teams at quality digital marketing companies are doing under Narin's direction and, and others like, like him um, are doing that every month for every page. The thing is, we don't, I don't have the staff for that in the clinic. I don't have the staff to go through every, I mean, maybe once, but certainly not every month. It's a full-time job, which is why we're paying you to commit so many hours to our site. Exactly. And, um, you know, one thing we can do as a, as a gift to everyone listening, we can review your marketing and tell you how you are doing on NAV how you are doing on Lighthouse Core, how you are doing on original content. Many of the things we covered today and a lot of things we didn't cover. And the way to do that is to book a marketing strategy meeting. It's equaekwa.com forward slash MSM. Our team will spend uh, six hours preparing for it. At the end of it, you will know what's wrong with your marketing and also you will have a game plan on how do you at least start ranking for a decent number of keywords by the end of year one and start getting those phone calls to ring. We do two parts. One is crushing Google and dominating organic search. Second part is to influence those people who see you on Google again and again, like 100,000 people see, uh, you know, uh, Thrive Portal and every year, every month for free on Google. Now we want to influence them and we use Dr. Cialdini's influence principles. That's what makes the phone ring and Thrive Portal and gets more than 100 new patient calls a month. So it's a combination of the two that we do, you know, helping you rank and then influencing people. It's a $900 value marketing strategy meeting, equa.com slash MSM. And that's essentially what I did, Narin, and, uh, you know, some in 2008 or nine, when we started with, uh, with you is, uh, had you look at our existing website, that was beautiful. It was gorgeous. It was done by designers and yada, yada, but it didn't rank. Um, right at all and you guys shared some of the reasons why and then like you said uh, uh overnight success 15 <laughs> years in the making we're, we're ranking for 700 words but the the piece that i love about it is that we we continue to rank it's not that we rank and not only do we continue to rank it's snowballing we're getting even bigger and bigger and bigger exactly so that's a beautiful thing if you uh if you have any question about your website, I mean, if you're not the, if, 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 if when bad things happen, you don't pull the blanket over your head and pretend that nothing's happening in the world, you need to take advantage of the MSM. Just, it's free. So I, I can't understand why anyone wouldn't um, review. And if in the end, you're in great shape, Equa will tell you you're in great shape and you'll have that confidence and you can send a cigar or a bottle of wine to your digital marketing people and say you're doing a great job. If you're failing in some areas, it's important that you know about it because you're investing so much time training and uh, working on your practice and working on your patients and the flow and the experience and all these other things that are important. If you're failing on the web piece of things, it is going to impact your business. Absolutely, Jeff. Uh, absolutely. Let's shift gears and talk about the second point that we want to cover today, how to leverage existing patients. I mean, you have what at least two decades of experience helping 200 plus practices. Plus you have, you know, eaten your own dog food. You tested at Thrive because you own that business uh, with, uh, um, you know, how long have you owned Thrive now? So 2007. 2007. Yeah, I think we started working in 2008. So that's uh, coming up on 15 years. That's awesome. So share, share your experience and how do you leverage existing patients, Jeff? Yeah, there's a number of good ways to do it. I This is an inexpensive thing. You know, this is um, continuing to stay engaged with your existing patient population. So, but we also need to be sensitive to not fatigue them. We don't want them to sign off our lists or feel like we're 
for bothering them or bugging them either. So it's, it's, a, it's tough that way, but um, I'm gonna list a few things that we can think about doing that every practice can do. Is one is just having monthly specials. Having specials each month, whether those are things that you highlight, those are things that you discount or both, it doesn't necessarily matter, but by creating a plan and having something to talk about each month, it gives your staff something new to talk about and highlight each month too. That creates immediate engagement in the practice. Then once I have stuff like that, there's a lot of simple things I can do. I can put a eight and a half by 11 sheet copy that I made on my own printer in a pretty picture frame and put that on a few counters around the office and now I can point, my staff can point to something very easily and say, were you aware of what we have going on this month at Thrive and give them something to talk about. Uh, another simple thing is placing those in the restrooms. You know, people generally are either sitting or standing when they're in the restroom. So you put those in a place that people can see them each time that they're in the um, the restroom. We've all been in bars where they have now digital advertising happening right there. So why why aren't we taking advantage of our own um, spots? Other things for engagement: um, uh, pop up banners when you first come into practice. You know, generally one. We we will have one or two in the office, no more than that, and we switch them out, hopefully to correspond with. Um, with our specials. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Naren, just the engagement that we get with patients in the office. So uh, knowing when birthdays and events are, it's very endearing to patients to have them uh, recognize that you're important to, to them. So by wishing them happy anniversary, happy birthday, sending communication out for those things, all of the above um, are easy and uh, effective ways to, to stay in touch with existing patients and invite them back to the office. And now we all have software as well that if you take the time to set it up, we'll do your, you know, at 120 days, we'll automatically spit out a Botox reminder if a patient hasn't come. At 90 days, may spit out a a refill request if a patient has 90 days of, of a supplement that you've given them and, or, a, or a sunblock product and it's run out. There's lots of automated things that we can do as well to stay engaged with our patient. Yeah, those are awesome, awesome tips. And like you said, Jeff, uh, you know, these are people you already have. So it won't cost you extra money to, you know, take care of them, you know, communicate with them and, and nurture them. So it, it's like a really smart way to, I know you, you have mastered this at Thrive. So I think part of your success comes from what we do in getting new patient flow coming in. But the other part comes from how you maximize the relationship. How do you optimize the relationships? Make them feel like a million bucks. And then of course, take care of them because things are changing. So what they thought was amazing six months ago or two years ago, may not be amazing anymore, but there are other things that are amazing. So just keeping them educated, keeping them in the loop, and also giving them a reason to come there. I think some of the points you made about like giving them a reason to show up. Those are all awesome, awesome, you're, awesome. You're ideas. so right. And, and you know, if you buy a new piece of equipment and you make that technology uh, leap, your own patients are the ones that are most likely to come because they already know, like, and trust you. They know exactly. where the parking lot is. They know how to get there. They know how to book an appointment. So when you buy a new piece of equipment, I wouldn't think, is this going to bring me new patients? It's not. In most cases, it is not. No matter how new and terrific it is, but you're, what you should be thinking is how much, how many of my existing patients are going to really love this and come right back in for it. You're 100% right. I think the no like and trust is critical, right? If it's a brand new technology, they now have to trust the technology and trust the provider. If they already trust you, then half the battle is over and they know that you won't mislead them because you have not. So when you say, you know what, there's this new technology and you, you guys should, you should take a look at it and you know, you are an important patient of mine, so I'm doing something extra for you. 
they are, they are there and then they'll tell everybody else oh did you know that xyz they will write a review for you and now you can take that review and use it in your social media use it in your you know to help you rank higher with google Eats. you can do all right. kinds of stuff and narin you know what i call those patients mvps right those are your mvp clients and i know that's our last point that yes we wanted to share with everyone today but what you just mentioned is exactly an mvp client but they're not only the most valuable uh, patients to the practice i like to say oftentimes they're the most vocal patients mm. so when you're picking your mvp patients you're maybe 10 to 20 mvp patients you really want to make sure that the vocal piece of it if they're introverts no matter how much you love them if they don't love other people and they don't love talking and sharing they can be a great patient of yours they just won't be an mvp patient Reorders, hairdressers, um, uh, people that are out in the community, nurses in uh, either in hospitals, nurses in OBGYN clinics or family practice, other providers. There's so many of these people, yoga instructors, um, uh, um, um, personal trainers, there's uh, cosmetic dentists, dentists that do cosmetic things, but don't do other things. There's so many people that are out networking. If we can network with a few of them and, and they're already our clients, we have clients that are physical trainers. We have clients that are realtors. We just need to turn them into most valuable patients. And, and the most vocal part that typically comes naturally to, to them. So, um, you know, one thing that I wanted to mention before, and you, you kind of made the point for me is with being able to keep patients, you know, Google is finding patients, but being able to keep patients, getting them back and back is good. Good medicine is always good business. Right. So, I mean, providing a good service, making people feel good, doing a good job, keeping them safe, delivering efficacious treatments. It, and I think I, I just don't want to leave it unsaid because we all think, of course, we all do that. But do you really spend the time making sure that you're safe and effective? And how good are you? How good are you at communicating that? How good is your before and after photography so that you can show patients because they forget what they used to look like? And all these other things are important as well. But um, Naren, I want to talk to you about, uh, I just want to tell a story about um, most vocal patients, kind of how, how we use them at Thrive. And specifically when we bring in a new piece of equipment, um, we like to do little MVP events. And I, I just want to share it because I think it's a, a good way to raise some money and raise awareness and, and actually give you the content that you need to then turn around and create original content for us and do all these other things. So, I mean, it, they really, all these things work synergistically. It's not, you don't have to do one of these things. You have to do all these things. Absolutely, Jeff. Yeah, I would love to hear that story. And I mean, I, I'm, I'm waiting. So when we bring in a new piece of equipment, we, we, we've identified these 20 most valuable patients. And we do things for them. At birthdays, they get... Uh, hundred dollars off uh, you know they may get um, if we have extra time while they're there we may just say to the esthetician hey let's do a microdermabrasion for sally today or let's get her under the led or you know these are things that don't cost us much let's do a glycolic peel for her because she was complaining about this or that um uh sometimes you have a little you know if you have filler left over or something or you know some uh uh, Botox that may expire or the rep helped you with or something like that to be able to say, hey, I have some of this and treating them a little bit more like, like family. But when we bring in something new, we say, hey, Sally, we have this new thing. We know you're going to love it. We're so excited. Will you come in and listen? L you know, we're going to do an event and we're only bringing in our 15 most valuable patients and we and you're one of them and we'd love for you to be here can you make it and now 
Sally comes in for the event along with 15 other vocal people that are really cheerleaders for our practice, right? These are the ones that hug us when we come in. These are the ones that everyone in the practice already knows their name, probably knows their spouse's name and whether their kids live in town or not in town, right? These are the people that have engaged with us. And we'll do an event and we'll, we'll say to them uh, and we'll give them uh, like skincare bags and other things that we've got reps to help us furnish and may have, uh, uh, you know, some nice food and light drinks um, available. And we unveil whatever the new procedure is. And then to those people, and I'll give you a great example. We did this with uh, when we brought in M-Sculpt. Um, this was years ago, the original M-Sculpt. When we brought it in, the we were selling uh, procedures for $4,000 and for a package of four. And what we would say to our MVP patients is, we want to do this for half off for the MVP patient. So we want to do it at $2,000. But for any patient that you refer to us, we want to give you an, another additional free treatment, you know, at no cost. So what does the MVP hear? They hear, I get a $1,000 treatment every time I refer another patient. And just with those 15 patients that we brought in, we must have booked 50 or 60 appointments. Why? Well, the vocal patient, the technology works. It's efficacious. It was a great experience in the practice. They're happy to talk about it to their friends. And now they get a $1,000 treatment each time. The expense to us in terms of the cost on the equipment was maybe $30 or $40. So for 30 or $40, and I know my patient acquisition, my own patient acquisition cost is somewhere like three to $400. So it, it, you know, if I look at everything, time involved and all these things, so the cost of doing this is so very little. And then they're in, as you mentioned, they're also the ones that do a five-star review. They're the ones that take before and after pictures and share it. It's, these are the patients that say, you know, if they went and got breast augmentation, they would be saying to their friends, check out my new boobs. You know, they're the ones that are really, they're not afraid. They're out there. They're happy to share and we love them. That's perfect. I love, love, love that um, mindset and the way you do that consistently with your MVP patients. So the idea of an MVP patient and then those special events to take care of them like royalty. So it, it's, it goes hand in hand. And I think the key point you made here is it's not just most valuable in terms of who spends the most money, but it's really the most vocal, the, the connected people. And you even named, you know, hairdressers and cosmetic dentists and all kinds of people, yoga instructors who have that personality and who already love what you do and love talking about it. So that's, and, and you take care of those people like royalty and they in turn take care of you like, you know, family. So it's, it's perfect. Um, as we come to a close, Jeff, um, I want to remind our listeners to take advantage of that marketing strategy meeting. The link is equa.com slash MSM. Uh, any other final thoughts you have? I'll just leave everyone with what I had mentioned before. I, I, these are all, none of this is an overnight success. If you're promised an overnight success, uh, it's not going to work in your benefit long term. You need to have a strategy and you need to have a plan. And whether you're with an existing company or not, if you started with an existing company some years ago, doing digital marketing on your behalf, and it's been three, four, five years, what's your plan now? What's your move forward plan? Is it a good plan? Are you invested in that plan? Do you understand it? Do you understand what you're trying to accomplish? But to go to work every day without a digital marketing plan in today's world is crazy. It's like, it's like it would be like uh, in the old days going to work and, and not turning the lights on and not putting the open sign on. Nobody knows whether you're open or not. Um, so you need to have that digital marketing plan. If you have one, great. If you don't have one, get one. If you don't have one and don't know where to go, do a marketing uh, a strategy meeting and at least um, get that information uh, so that you feel comfortable that when you make a plan, you make a plan in the areas that are appropriate for you. Thank you, Jeff. Wonderful topic. 
uh, we talked about three points, which is organic marketing, uh, leveraging your existing patients, as well as how to, you know, successfully conduct an MVP event. Thank you, Jeff, for your insights. I very much enjoyed this uh, conversation and thank you for our listeners. You know, without you, we won't be able to do what we are doing. Uh, with you, we have now hit the 50,000 downloads mark per month, which I think is, is, a, is a record in aesthetics. I don't think there's any podcast out there in aesthetics that's listened to by as many people as uh, the Business of Aesthetics podcast is. So it's all because of you. Kindly write reviews for us, share it with your friends, or share it on social media. We sincerely appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you for joining us this week on the Business of Aesthetics podcast series, brought to you by our gold sponsors, MRP, Laser Optech, and Equa Marketing, and silver sponsors, Eilis, Works, and Pronox. Would you like to join our growing group of aesthetic industry experts and get featured on the Business of Aesthetics podcast? Or do you know someone who would love to share their strategies for growth in the aesthetics business, providing quality patient care or their clinical expertise? Head on over to www.businessofaesthetics.org slash podcast dash show and apply to be featured as a guest on the show. Remember to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, or wherever you listen. If you would like to engage with today's or any of our past speakers, join our Facebook group or LinkedIn group by searching for Business of Aesthetics. Thank you and have a great day.